So that's happening. So I've got a laser machine. I've never used a laser machine, don't know how to use a laser machine, but I'm gonna figure it out and I'm gonna film the whole process. Got all the boxes here. I'm gonna show you the unboxing, set this up, show you that process so you can see what it's like to set up a laser machine. Okay, so I've been planning to get a laser machine for a little while. There's a few things I wanna be able to do with it that I've been holding off on. So I've finally decided to bite the bullet get a laser machine. So I did some research the last few months, figured out which machine I wanted to get, and I kind of landed on the X-Tool. It seemed like it was in the right price point for the size and type of machine I was looking for. So I was all ready to make the purchase, decided X-Tool was the one I wanted to go with, and then I thought, why don't I reach out to X-Tool and see if they have some sort of like a, a partnership program or something. Maybe I can get a discount on some of the tools if I, do a review or something. A lot of companies seem to be doing that these days. So I reached out to Xtool and said, hey, here's who I am. Here's what I wanna do. I wanna get a laser and I wanna show leather workers specifically how I use a laser. And they said, great, what do you want? I said, well, this is what I'm looking at. They said, great, what's your address? We'll send it to you. So they just sent it to me. So I've got the Xtool D1 Pro 10 watt laser. I've got the air assist, I've got the enclosure and I've got the honeycomb work table. Full disclosure, Xtool sent me all of this free of charge. The only condition that I get these is that I publish two or three reviews within like three to five weeks or something. There's no conditions on what I say in these reviews. They didn't specify anything with what had to go into it or anything at all. So that's a disclosure statement. So thank you to Xtool for sending me these products. Uh, so far, my experience has been great. And that experience amounts to getting boxes into the studio. I'm now going to unbox all this stuff, get this stuff assembled, and show you how that assembly goes. As somebody who's never built a laser, I've never used a laser, I've only seen them on YouTube, and I've watched a lot of those videos. So I'm not actually gonna be using the laser in this video, this is simply just the setup and my experience with it. The next video, I will have had two weeks with the laser by the time that video is released, and I'll give my initial thoughts in that first early period of how I like the laser, my experience with it, and whether it's gonna work for the jobs I wanna do. Okay, so here's the unboxing for the X-Tool D1 Pro. It says Pro under there, trust me. So, nice green boxes. So we got some nice test material here. Looks like we got some nice Baltic birch. Some sort of maybe aluminum, cork, glass or acrylic maybe. It's a block of oak. That's something, I don't know what that is. It's like some metal business cards or something. This looks like some sort of rubber. So in the one package you get a whole bunch of cool test materials. I'm assuming this is all of our documents. So all nicely packaged. Everything's nice and protected. Nice little thank you. Some more promo material. D1 instructions. Quick start guide. You will be needing this for sure. So I'll set that aside. Let's see what we got underneath. So there is the machine itself. So what do we got? We got main bracket here. Nice anodized aluminum. Beauty. Very well packed, if I do say so. This stuff is not gonna be moving around at all during shipping. That's our crossbar in there. Really nicely packed. This is really well done. Looks like our, this is the piece with the motor on it. Controller board is over here. Here's the actual laser itself. So this is the 10 watt laser. And then in here, a little case, some zip ties, and a little tool kit, screwdriver, 
little micro USB, some Allen keys, screws, some set pins. Very well packaged. I like it. I'm happy with it. Makes me feel good about the quality of the rest of the product. So now we're actually going to build the main piece. So I've got my four main parts laid out here. I've got my screws ready. I'm going to use the included screwdriver. I'll use theirs so that we get the full experience of this setup. So I'm just gonna lightly put in one screw in the corner so it holds itself together there. And then this, this arm just slides into the front piece. So again, just lightly setting these top screws in just so that it holds its shape. So we've got the main frame now assembled. So working on the back of the machine, we're gonna add the screws for our timing belt. So it says to slide this right in and then just lightly screw it in to the timing belt mechanism. It's aligned perfectly. So the screw just threads right in. So we're gonna leave this one loose for now so that it can continue to move and the belt doesn't get too tight. So now we just slide the shaft into the front of the machine. This part goes into the bearing underneath the circuit board. So before you insert the shaft into the bearing, make sure you attach your belt and then secure your coupling to the main motor. Also, if this belt is too tight, come up to the back tension screw, loosen that off to bring this piece down, that'll loosen the belt. And the other side is secured with this coupling. And then also, before we tighten down the coupling, we're actually gonna move these sliders all the way to the back until this piece is touching the back. Same on this side, you want these slid all the way to the back of the machine, and then you can make, you can tighten off the belt and tighten off the coupling. So this split piece, I just put the end of this main shaft right up to the end there. You can see down through here and then screwed that down so that there's as much of this coupling grabbing the main shaft as this part. Once that's done, we can hook up our motor cable to the motor and then to the board. We can then use the provided cable ties to secure that cable in place on these holes that are in the frame already. So next we can install our gantry. So we snip off the white cable ties, making sure to avoid any of the important cables that are underneath it. We don't want to snip those. So we have these two cables which we can leave out of the way. Then we have this cable right here, which is tucked underneath and that plugs right in to the motor. So then we can take our gantry with the two bearings facing up. The single bearing is on the bottom Bring it to the back of the machine. Make sure our cables are out of the way. Coming in, I just wrap them around to the center of the machine. Make sure this one is wrapped around. And then I just lined up one side with one of the indicated screws. And then I would come through. And I'll do the opposite corner on this side and then finish off the other two screws. So with our machine on its face, we're gonna use this small little jumper cable that's provided to jump from 
the main gantry to the frame. While we're at it, we can go ahead and make all these main connections. So here we can actually do the final assembly on our laser, laser module. So I'm just going to loosen off these two very small screws that are in the back to remove the protective plate. And then remove the sticker from the side, insert the cap back on, and tighten down those set screws. Then we can take our nozzle connector and screw it in to the laser. So then from there, we can insert our laser into the actual holder. Now this little set screw, if you pull it out, you can actually loosen or tighten this set screw. Now for me, I was able to actually just slide this in almost on the first go. So I just had to loosen it off a few turns until the laser slides down in place. And then to lock it back down, we just go in the opposite direction until this thumb screw for me was pointing straight down and now I know the laser module is nice and secure. From there, we can take the connector cable that's on the gantry, put it through the loop that's in the back of the laser and plug everything in. Final step, let's take the micro USB that is provided and insert it into the motherboard. And that's it. So the X tool itself is all set up. That wasn't that bad. That probably would have only taken me about 20, 30 minutes if I wasn't filming. Filming it takes a bit longer. Overall, it wasn't too bad. I have watched a few YouTube videos on pointers about how to set this up, specifically regarding cable management and things like that. I'll link those videos in the description so you can watch those if you're gonna set one of these up for yourself. So next up is the air assist and the enclosure. Okay, on to the air assist. So there's the instruction manual. I think this one is going to be fairly straightforward. There's not a whole lot going on. There's our hose. I think these are the filters. Some Allen keys, some screws, hardware bits. I actually don't think I need this. I think it's for the D1, uh, the D1 Pro pretty sure has all this compo these components built in. A new nozzle and a cap. So we'll see if we need that stuff. The hose over here and then here's the actual air assist module. So it's not a small unit, that is for sure. This thing weighs a few pounds, measuring about six inches wide, about five inches tall. I have heard some complaints about this that it's not as well integrated as kind of the rest of the machine but you know what I'm not too concerned so we're going to take this little plastic bit and that black part put those together and those both go on the front so I brought my X tool over so we can see this hose all it does Drops in through the top mount and then into the side nozzle here. That slides in, that's it. This is the controller for how much airflow is blowing on our workpiece. So in case it, in case it was unclear, the purpose of this machine is to blow air onto the surface of the material that you're cutting or engraving to keep down any charring or burning that can occur. Obviously depending on the material you're working with, that can be more of a concern or less of a concern, but I'm working with, going to be working with leather. So I want to make sure that that leather doesn't char or chars as little as possible. So I get a nice clean engrave or a nice clean cut. And that's it for the air assist. This I'll have to figure out how this is best mounted with this piece right here while this is in use and this gantry is moving back and forth. That shouldn't be that big a deal. And then this hose down here as well. I'm going to sort that out after once I have this more set up 
and that's permanent home. So jumping right over to this honeycomb base. This one doesn't require any assembly, I don't think. So this platform is used to raise your the piece that you're working on off of the base to give more airflow underneath. This is another thing that is really good for, from what I've read so far, for helping with uh, charring or burning. So because I'm hoping to get leather pieces cut out and basically ready to work with as little cleanup as possible, I think this is gonna be an important feature. So as usual, very, very well packaged. And it actually comes with these little magnets. I didn't know that. So you can actually take your leather and hold it down. It also comes, which I also didn't know, with a proper aluminum base that sits underneath this platform to protect your table surface. That is, um, that is really good. So when I'm ready to go, I'll just peel off this blue protective material that's on both sides, and then it'll be ready to go. The thing it does come with, is these corner protectors. So these corners are a little bit sharp. So what you can do is add this padding on all four corners on both sides. And it's just lined with some 3M tape. Take that off, stick it onto the corner. So I'm gonna leave these off of the top, but I am going to put them on the bottom. Aesthetically, I like it cleaner on the top. So we'll just use four of these and then put the other four away in case we need them later. So each of the pads comes with this 3M double-sided tape. So just peel off that protective layer, left with the tape, it sticks on a corner. That's it. Okay, everyone, last but not least, we got the enclosure. So this one is probably fairly straightforward. These are uh, assembly instructions. The real test with this thing is whether it's actually gonna work to extract the, uh, the fumes specifically. So there's less of a smell in here. This comes with a nice hose, spring clips. That's the connector that goes on to the actual enclosure. And then a simple little brushless fan motor. The hose itself is this kind of plastic kind of thing. It feels pretty sturdy, actually. You know what it feels like? It almost feels like black duct tape just wrapped around a coil. That's probably all it is. This is the lid, which has the nice screen filter. I think that's a side panel. And there's more panels. So port goes on, fan goes on behind it. And then it just presses through these holes that are here. And the backside is gonna be captured by that nut. I just press it through, screws on that side. Okay, so that's our right side. That piece clips on to there. This side clicks here. And we've got our front piece. Easy, easy, easy. So you got these two little pieces on the inside and it's got this little bend right here. This clips onto the inside. to cover up this space. This is where the controllers are on the machine. So this is where the on and off button are and the USB port. So you use this Velcro to cover up so it's more, so the whole unit is more sealed up. Just Velcro, Velcro, and then there's the lid. So yeah, that just Velcroed onto each side and then the back. And then that is the closure there. 
Now it also comes with these little straps that snap into these snap buttons on either side and it holds it up. So that hose hooks into the side there and then this is the other port that's going to go out to the window. So what I'm going to do is, is get a piece of wood that fits the open part of my window and then get a similar coupling here and have that connected right on. So this is going straight out the window and if I seal it properly, it shouldn't be able to come back in, presumably vent in all of the smoke and the fumes. So that's it for the big enclosure. Now we just gotta get all set up. So here's a quick shot of the final enclosure. It's about a week later from when that last shot was filmed. So I've had a week with the machine. It's been doing really well so far. Enclosure fits nicely here. X-Tool sits inside. Got the nice honeycomb platform, which has been doing really well. The air assist is coming out the side. These little magnets that came with it work really well. But I want to show you my the exhaust, because that was my biggest concern with this whole thing. Okay, so I have my X-Tool right here. The exhaust port comes out the back of the right-hand side with the black tube. I have my window right here, which is a sliding one. So what I did is I just made a board that was the same size as this window and could slide into this track. I picked up this, actually I think this uh, shower gasket, which happens to fit perfectly the hose that comes with it. So you just have to pull this through and this holds it nice and snug. Drill this into the board, cut a hole, made a little handle, and now this easily slides in and out of the window when I'm ready to use the machine. And it exhausts all of the fumes and smoke really, really well. So for this past week, I've been using the X-Tool Creative Space software. It's the free one that's included uh, when you buy a machine. It's a basic software, but it's really all I need for what I'm looking to do. So within that software, I've been developing my test files which has all the different power settings, speed settings, and all of that to figure out which is gonna work best on the different types of leather that I'm using in the studio. So next week's video is all about using the machine. What it was like when I first turned it on, some of the challenges I faced, how difficult was it to get the settings I wanted, and what are the results? Is it gonna do what I'm hoping it's gonna do? That's for next week's video. So my overall impression is it's a really solid machine. The setup was very easy. It seems very user-friendly. The software is very good. Overall, I'm incredibly happy with the tool itself. If you do end up getting one of the machines, I encourage you to go watch the Embrace Making setup video. It's the one I watched to put this one together. It's very in-depth, very detailed, really good video. And it covers a lot about cable management, which is probably my only gripe about this tool is the cable management could be better. Other than that, super happy with it. So again, I wanna thank X-Tool for sending me this machine and all the fancy little bits that came with it. You'll notice in the description, there are affiliate links in there. So if you use those links to make a purchase, I get a very small percentage, which goes a long way to helping this channel. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below. And if you wanna see some of the products I come up with and see the journey along the way, follow me on Instagram, norfolk.handmade and head over to my website, norfolkhandmade.com. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.